My first question today asked if I thought that Roger Taylor and John Deacon were overlooked in the band Queen because of the superstardom of Brian May and Freddie Mercury. This is a great question, and although it might piss some people off, I'm going to go ahead and say no, I don't think they were unfairly overlooked at all. Much like Ringo Starr, John Paul Jones, Mitch Mitchell, the list goes on, Taylor and Deacon were both great musicians who happened to be in bands with extraordinary musical icons. It's not to say they weren't great players, it's not to take away anything from their achievements or their influence, nothing. But there's an absolute difference in where they stand amongst the greats in their particular instrument over the decades. Both Freddie Mercury and Brian May set new standards and innovation in performance and style. And while the rhythm section in Queen was always nothing short of fantastic, you can't deny that. They're just on a different level when compared to the other two guys in the group. It's a harsh truth, but in my opinion, it's still the truth. The next person asked me whether or not I listen to Pantera, and if I do, whether I like them or not. I absolutely love Pantera, and while I can't remember exactly when they came into my life, I do remember getting vulgar display of power the day it came out, so I must have gotten into them somewhere in the wake of Cowboys from Hell. These days, rarely a week goes by that I don't spin a fair amount of Pantera, and I was lucky enough to see them three times in the 90s. I think those albums hold up really well, and there's still a lot that new bands can learn from Pantera. And the re-releases they've been doing lately have been fantastic, I dig the live stuff, and there's still some life left in that band. If you don't know Pantera, you really have to get into them. Trust me. My last question asked me if here in New York City there's still places where musicians thrive like the Chelsea Hotel, CBGB, and other places like that. It also asked me where I think the most new and exciting music is coming from, and those two questions are really answered by the same thing. In terms of finding and creating new music, it's all going on on the internet, whether you like it or not. Having to move to a certain city or a certain place to have access to venues or certain people, it's really no longer a reality today. And I will admit that that has both good and bad repercussions. Having worked there every single day for a majority of the past year, I can tell you firsthand that in terms of it being a creative hotspot for musicians, the East Village in New York City is pretty much dead. If you're looking for a bunch of spoiled trust funders, there's plenty of them to find here, but the creative people have had to move to other places because they can't afford to live there anymore. Now, New York City still is a place that any band of any style or genre can find plenty of places to play, and the DIY movement is still alive and well. They've just moved to different places, they're a bit more inaccessible, but I guess that's kind of the point of being an underground performance, right? But really, that exclusivity of needing to be somewhere in particular particular to be around certain people to get a record deal, it's kind of a thing of the past. The recording process and ways to expose your music to the world has become inexpensive, if not free. And I think that's why we're seeing so many new and exciting shifts in how music is delivered and the overall quality of music these days. Smaller labels have easier access to great bands all around the world, and with the lower prices, they can put out more bands and give them the exposure they need. I think that's why you see the rise in smaller labels doing so well, and so many labels going back to the idea of label identification that we talked about a few weeks ago. The reality today is whether you're in New York City or you're in New Albany, Ohio, the playing field has really been leveled. Dig into SoundCloud, Bandcamp, there are so many places to discover great music and find people you might want to work with. The internet is an amazing tool for the world of music and I think it can only get better from here. So those are my questions for this time. If you've got a music related question, you can email it to me at thedailyguru at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook right here and I'll see you guys again next time. <laughs>